When I first started recording videos for this channel, my purpose was to produce a series of quick guides on aircraft from their inception to around the end of World War II. However, I found myself digressing into the series I call World's Firsts. With this presentation, I attempt to return to the original intent. This is a quick guide to the Fokker Eindecker Fighter of World War I. In terms of air combat, the Fokker Eindecker, literally single deck, is probably the most influential aircraft in history. It demonstrated to the world what a fighter aircraft should be and inspired the development of dogfighting rules and tactics. It was, by the standards of the time, fast and manoeuvrable, and most importantly of all, mounted one and later two modified heavy machine guns, MG 0815s, fixed to fire forwards through the propeller arc. Made possible by interrupter gear that prevented the machine guns from firing when the propeller obstructed the barrels, it meant that the armament was directly in line with the pilot, allowing him to effectively fly and fight at the same time, aiming by simply pointing the aircraft at his target. While this seems obvious to us now, previous experimentation with armed aircraft had focused on a flexible mount manned by a separate gunner. Considered a good idea at the time, as illustrated by the Vickers FB-5, in reality shooting from a platform moving in three dimensions against another aircraft similarly manoeuvring in three dimensions is a profoundly difficult task. By fixing the guns to fire forwards, this task is made somewhat more straightforward, saves weight by the elimination of the gunner, and thus makes the aircraft smaller. In general, a small, light dogfighter is preferable to a large, heavy one. This is not to say that the design of the Eindecker emerged fully formed from the mind of its designer, Martin Kreutzer. It did not. It evolved over time and incorporated technologies and ideas that can be attributed to others. However, it was the first time all these came together in one lethal package and was the first dedicated fighter aircraft fielded by the nascent German Air Force. It is impossible to talk about the Eindecker without mentioning Anton Hermann Gerard Fokker, whose name it bears. A Dutchman working for the Germans during World War I, he has been described as a gifted pilot, popular and charismatic with other pilots. At the same time, he was a poor businessman, and his mismanagement of his own company made it hard for them to achieve quotas. He was not above stealing credit for the designs of others, including blatant patent infringement, shamelessly admitted to bribing officials to get what he wanted, and on one occasion angrily berated Martin Kreutzer, who lay dying in the wreckage of an aircraft. Additionally, he was a blatant war profiteer who would these days be regarded as a traitor to his country. The genesis of the Eindecker can be traced back to Raymond Saulnier, the man who designed Blériot's Type 11, the first aeroplane to cross the Channel, and which saw military service between 1911 and 1915, including the early years of World War I. In 1913, Anton Fokker acquired a Moraine Saulnier Type H parasol monoplane, and through a series of design iterations over the next 18 months or so, it was developed into the Fokker Mark V. Despite the attachment of Fokker's name to the resulting aircraft, the primary designer was Martin Kreutzer. In early 1915, it became clear to German authorities that a dedicated fighter aircraft would be necessary. To this end, inspired by pre-existing patents filed by Franz Schneider, August Euler and Raymond Saulnier himself, and given urgency by the experimentation of Roland Garot, a somewhat functional interrupter gear was designed that allowed a machine gun to fire through the propeller arc as mentioned previously. This resulted in the Fokker Eindecker E1, a monoplane fighter with a tubular steel airframe utilizing wing warping in what was almost the last gasp of that technology before ailerons took over. Relatively fast, at 82 miles per hour, it required significant control because of the use of wing warping, but was manoeuvrable enough to outclass its opponents. Hardly a perfect aircraft, the fuel system required frequent manual pumping up to eight times per hour. The interrupter gear was not reliable and shattered propellers were a hazard. The single heavy machine gun was plagued by the use of a cloth belt for the ammunition, which would swell in the damp and freeze at altitude, causing failures to feed. 
Rudder control was rather sensitive, leading to several fatalities during training. The rotary engine generated a significant amount of torque so that making fast turns necessitated turning it off and on again in a process known as blipping to get the aircraft around. Despite this, it was still an improvement over what was currently flying, and though initially deployed at the beginning of July 1915 as an escort for reconnaissance aircraft, its pilots found it was better suited for more offensive roles. Thus began the organization of JAG Staffeln, or hunter groups, whose primary purpose was the active hunting of opposing aircraft. The E-1 was something of a cobbled together solution to an armed fighter, and it was quickly succeeded by the E-2, which better integrated the armament with the airframe. Additionally, the manual pump was partly replaced by one powered by the airflow when in flight. Improvements to the interrupter mechanism were made, though this was never completely reliable. A more powerful and more reliable engine was fitted, and the fuselage lengthened to compensate for the extra weight. Top speed increased slightly to 87 miles per hour. A collective total of 85 were manufactured, the E-2 being around a third of the total. However, the E-2 was immediately superseded by the E-3, which came into service in September of 1915. The main change was moving the fuel tank from beneath the engine cowling to behind the pilot, thus improving ammunition storage. The E-3 was the definitive version of the Eindecker, and 268 were built for the German army. Between September and around February of 1916, the various versions contributed to what became known as the Fokker Scourge over the Western Front. Reports from the time indicate the uproar over the increasing losses being incurred in aircraft and crew, and urgent efforts were made to counter the threat. In an attempt to keep the Iron Decker current, the E-4 version was developed in November of 1915. It is notable for its use of twin machine guns, in an arrangement that became the standard until the introduction of wing-mounted multiple armament during the interwar period. Though equipped with a more powerful engine, and at 110 miles per hour significantly faster in level flight, this advantage was offset by reduced reliability, increased weight, poor maneuverability, and decreased performance at altitude. It was not regarded as a superior aircraft, and in fact was criticized for being too fast, making attacks on the enemy hard to estimate. It did not replace the E-3 in service, and only 49 were produced. Rapid development of the new Port 11 and the Airco DH-2 resulted in the threat of the Eindecker being effectively countered, so that by the spring of 1916 the Allies had briefly achieved air superiority. Thus began the tit-for-tat series of fighter development that continued to the end of the war and contributed to the high stress and losses that characterized air combat to the extent that the expected lifespan of new pilots could be measured in just days and the overall average was only two weeks. Though no longer suited for the cauldron of action over the Western Front, the E-Series continued service in quieter arenas of the war and served in non-combat roles until 1917. Nonetheless, the impact of the Eindecker and the improved tactics it initiated cannot be understated. Key pilots of the type included Kurt Vintjens, who achieved the first aerial victory in an interrupter-equipped aircraft, Max Immelmann, and Oswald Bolker, whose influence persists to this day. None of them survived, all dying in September, June, and October of 1916, respectively. The only known surviving original Eindecker, bearing serial number 210-16, was brought down in the Somme area in 1916 by the British and then evaluated by the War Office until it was transferred to the London Science Museum in 1918. It is currently on display fully assembled, but with its fabric covering removed to illustrate its internal construction. <laughs>